Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Glover Actual here. I'm sorry I said it like that, but that's the channel. If you if you like the channel, you follow, hit subscribe, hit the notification tab. I was talking with a buddy of mine named Eric, who is a former special operations guy who I podcasted on the Black Rifle Coffee podcast. If you don't know, you should know that Mike Force has a podcast, which is my personal podcast that I do solo. The guest version of that is Mondays with Mike Force on the Black Rifle Coffee podcast. It's an opportunity uh, for me to reach a broader audience and also interview people, especially veterans doing good stuff. Eric was a special operations guy that served 20 years, 20 plus years in the US military. He retired as a Sergeant Major and we talk about cyber, we talk about uh, social media, the future of our country um, and the transition of military special operations guys into civilian life. Uh, I have personally went through that experience and one of the things that hit home for me was our conversation about the war chest. This is my war chest. In fact, um, this 100 mile an hour tape is like the original that says Glover's box. Um, is a box that I deployed with several times in the military. Why is this important? Well, I wanted to keep this box for my kids. I wanted to put all the things that I materially held on to through my military career inside of a box so one day my son or my daughter could open it up and understand who their father really was. Um, you know, a lot of veterans, according to Eric, uh, donate these type of things to surplus stores, just trying to get rid of it because they don't want to be reminded of that experience. No, no matter what that reason is, it's sad. And I, I don't want you guys, if you served or in any capacity served and hold on to mementos and get rid of that stuff. I, I want you to hold on to that stuff because it's cool to recount experiences based on opening that up and going through things to reminisce and bring back memories, sometimes even bad memories. But I wanted the opportunity with you on YouTube to open this up and to go through a few things I'll do uh, additional parts of that because there's a lot of crap in here, but I wanted to just go over a couple items so you can go through the reminiscing experience with me. Now, I haven't opened this in probably two years. John just helped me pull this out of, the, out of one of my uh, closets in the garage, so it's been a while, but here we go. Um, it smells like, uh, smells like service. Um, Already, I don't even know what this is. So this is a Iraqi uniform that I'm going to, I'm actually going to donate. I, I forgot I had this, but I'm going to donate this to Eagles and Angels, who takes old uniforms, converts them into uh, hats, different wallets, and different things. So you guys could be part of this experience. But, oh yeah, it smells like me. That's definitely me. Um, I wore this. This is an Iraqi counterterrorism uniform. I believe based off the Lithuanian uniform. Um, that we wore in combat, and we really didn't wear these a lot, but I wore this on a hostage rescue that we did in Najaf in 2008. We had a, an operation, actually, is there a, no, not this pair of pants, I might have put a hole in that one. Um, we, we had an operation where we did a hostage rescue, there were some British hostages being held, and they would only let Iraqi commandos go into the area, so we had to wear these in ski masks and pretend like we were Iraqi because they look like us. Iraqi counterterrorism force guys look like us. They operate like us, and they're amazing human beings. They are the reason why ISIS doesn't exist in Iraq, by the way. They did the hard fighting in Mosul. Um, yeah, big shout out to ICTF. Um, a lot of my buddies um, from the ICTF came over to America, and this is one of the uniforms. Um, oh, look at this old helmet. Um, this is an old helmet. Um, this is one of the ones I wore as a breacher in the Commanders and Extremist Force. It's got, um, I put this Velcro on there with glue, I think Shugu, um, some glint tape. This was for goggles. Um, if you're going to do aircraft um, on an MH60, you wanted to have goggles on back then. That was for an Arcos camera, a crappy Arcos camera. Um, this tape was breacher tape, just electrical tape that I used to pull off I used to keep it on my helmet to be able to pull off quickly because depending on the breacher equipment we had, 
the charges that we used, we might need to reinforce it depending on the material we are sticking it on. I think this is before we had um, the sticky, gooey stuff that you see with explosive charges today. Uh, I, I mean, look at that mount. Uh, that's an old mount. But yeah, man, pretty cool seeing this old helmet here. Um, what else we got in here? Oh, look at this guy. Huh. A little clock. Um, rewind the hands of time of memory. Good old Mokhtar al Sadr and his old man. Um, I do remember this. There was a Target in 2006, which is kind of the height of the Mokhtar uh, al-Mahdi army. Mokhtar al Sadr um, and the Mahdi militia were uh, Shia, and they were fighting a war against the Sunnis post us transitioning in that war from kind of occupation to targeting insurgency. In 2006, at the height of it, we were in Sadr City in 06 and 07 almost every other night. And it was a bad place to be. These guys were supported by uh, Iranian support, which included EFPs, four uh, 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 shaped charges, basically, that were IEDs that were killing soldiers on the battlefield. So they became the targets. I pulled this out of a house on one of the last targets that we hit in Sadr City. And if it belongs to you and you're in Sadr City, go ahead and uh, hit me up on email or leave a comment below and we'll make sure we get this mail back to you. Um, man, that brings back some memories. Ah, uh, timeless. <laughs> get it, timeless? We'll do one more item. Oh, yeah. Um, I have no idea what this says, um, but I do remember the time and the instance. I think this is a Mahdi militia insurgency flag because in 08 in Sadr City in a hellacious gunfight I wanted to have something to take with me because I knew I was going to another AO or area of operation and I wanted to have something to remember uh, that experience by and everybody had talked about the green flag is the Mahdi militia flag so um, after a hellacious gunfight we were on war pigs which are flatbed uh, tractor trailers and I was on a 240 machine gun and there was a lull in fire. And this flag was flying, so I ran up and I grabbed it and I took this with me. And I thought it was a Mahdi militia flag and some dude actually told me it was like a shawarma flag for selling shawarma, which is like uh, selling uh, tacos at a taco stand. It was like, buy two, get one free. Um, I don't know if that's true, but if you know what this means, and this is actually Mahdi militia, leave your comments below. You can look it up online. But I remember grabbing this and sticking it in my kit uh, during an operation. Um, it's called War Booty back in the days. Um, uh, but a lot of guys have those experiences. Oh, let me pull this out because um, I, I actually talked about this on my Patreon account. Um, I do premiere content on my Patreon. I had to wear this for a specific mission, a low-vis mission. Uh, we talked about this in uh, the, the experience. You can see that link down below. It's Mike Glover is my Patreon. Um, but you can see this below. It's kind of cool that I'm seeing this because we call these man jams. Uh, and every Friday we used to wear these around the fire base, depending on what we're doing. But I actually got to use these in a low vis operation because supposedly I look like an Afghan fighter from Nuristan. No big deal. Um, last but not least, let me just pull this out because I do want to say a shout out to the guys of 2nd Battalion Bush Hogs, 3rd Special Forces Group. 2nd Battalion was the battalion I was in both. Charlie Company and Bravo Company. If you heard me do the Michelle Black podcast on Black Rifle Coffee podcast, the wife of Brian Black, who was killed in Niger, Africa, with three other men from 3rd Special Forces Group, this is that battalion. That was A Co. I was in both B Co. and C Co. of 2nd Battalion. When I went to this battalion, their motto was, we do bad things to bad people. I thought that was cool. But was even cooler is they had a bad guy's leg they have t taken off target um, that was in their display case. And this is early, this is probably 2004, where I was in the Q course and I was like, I want to be part of that battalion. And I winded up serving in the Bush Hogs. Might be reminiscent of another company that has motorcycles. Um, but 2nd Battalion Bush Hogs, 3rd Special Forces Group, was a great battalion, great companies, and a whole bunch of great men. Guys, I wanted to share some of this with you. I'll continue to kind of 
go through this for some content. I'll do part two of this. If you like this, because it's kind of cool for me. I, I, I assumed it was going to be cool for you, which is why I wanted to do it. I was like, John, grab your camera. This is kind of be cool. I was going to do it anyway for Patreon. Um, if this is cool for you, leave your feedback below um, and share your experiences. If you're a veteran and you have a war box, let us know some things that you hold near and dear from your personal experiences down below. Also subscribe and hit the notification tab. Until next time, peace out. Thanks, guys.